Crown Produce supplying select Canadian retailers. Crown Produce, proud sponsors of Canada West Football and Canadian University Countdown on Shaw. Welcome everyone to Crown Canadian University Countdown season number two. I'm Jim Mullen. You know, we're coming off the greatest game ever played, according to many, the 2011 Vanier Cup that was here in Vancouver. So as an encore, we've assembled the greatest duo ever to do highlights. Mr. Andrew Wadden and Mr. Ryan Sullivan. Boys, take it away. What an intro. Thanks for the hype there, Jim. Greatly appreciated. Let's see if we can follow it up. The CIS football campaign officially in full swing as the AUS regular season kicked off this week. There's week two in Quebec where two teams remain unbeaten. While in Ontario, the usual suspects continue to roll. In the Canada West, one giant is standing tall, while another situation may have gone from bad to worse. Isn't that right, Mr. Andrew Wadden? It is indeed, Mr. Sullivan. We've been very formal to start this season here on Crown Canadian University's Countdown, if I say so myself. All right, let's fire this puppy up. To the prairies we go. T-Birds, Rams, both teams looking for the first W of the year. Mark Mueller facing a UBC team that broke him off last year, forcing him to miss the entire season. T-Birds led by that man right there, reigning Heck Crichton Award winner, Billy Green. Early in the first queue, and the Rams' Dylan Dawson goes to work, picking up 20 and laying a beauty of a stiff arm to Brian Rideout. Looking like Ryan here having to fight off the ladies when he's out at the Roxy. That's not true. That run would set <laughs> things up for Mueller to go to work. First, he finds Colton Solomon for 7 then it's Dawson, this time in the air for 12 and a first. Mueller then scrambles to find Solomon once again, deep in the bird's nets. That's a pickup of 9 the very next play, Dawson completes the drive, spinning his way into the end zone. Rams are on the board. The extra uno was good. It's now 7-zip. Shift now to the second. The T-Birds put a three spot on the board. And after Regina goes two and out, Green connects on second and 20 with Daniel English, who makes an outstanding grab, a 48-yard pickup. And Green, well, he's liking what he sees. Four plays later, Green goes end zone for Mika Tile, a 24-yard touchdown for the fourth-year receiver. UBC would kick the extra point. They're now up 10 to seven. In the third, the visitors up 13-7. Mike Kiapwe starts to go to business. Here he picks up 17. On the very next play, Kiapwe busts through the gaping hole and he goes all the, yeah, that's right, he went all the way. A 41-yard score for the sophomore back. The Rams retake the lead. It's now 14-13. A few minutes later, Green, deep in his own end, gets his pass deflected by the big boy, Stefan Charles, who gets his bear claw on the pigskin. Benton Gianni has the ball fall right into his lap. That sets up this two-yard score for who else? Kiepway, his second of the game, and the floodgates are now starting to open. Two and a half minutes later, Mueller hits Landon Bush from 23 yards out, and the Rams keep on rolling. That puts the green and gold ahead by 25. To the fourth we go, Mark Mueller picking up where he left off as he connects with that bad, bad man. Colton Solomon once again turns on the afterburners, takes it to the house, 44-yard score, and we're starting to smell a blowout. 42-13 Rams. As if the beating the birds were taking wasn't enough, on second and 11, Billy Green calls the QB keep up the middle, and what looks like an innocent play turns out to be tragic for UBC as Green's right heel seems to get caught up. He's in obvious pain, and his night is over. Then, as Regina has done all night long, they land a few more blows on the punch-drunk T-Birds. Jameer Walker picks UBC back up. Dominic Bunchu's first ever CIS pass. Stick a fork in UBC. They are done. However, despite the loss, the even bigger story for UBC is the loss of its star QB, Billy Green, whose status for next week's tilt with Saskatchewan is questionable. Green's night finished with him gaining just 28 all-purpose yards while Rams running back Mike Kiepway averaged nine yards per carry with two touchdowns. Well, while things were going pretty well for the one Saskatchewan team in green, let's head to Winnipeg, see how the Saskatchewan Huskies and Manitoba Bisons played out. 
We get a nice look here at Investors Group Stadium, the 2013 home of the Bisons and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers starting up next season. Huskies and Bisons each coming in after a pair of big weeks to start the year. Both teams looking to stay undefeated. The Huskies strike first. QB Drew Burko calling his own digits. He scampers in from the 18 and it's 8 blank Sasky. After three straight safeties from the green and black, Manitoba faced a two-score game to start the second queue. Brian Giesbrecht shows off his hands from six yards out. That cuts the lead in half at the half and the 11-15 attendance at University Stadium going nuts. Wild! Manitoba keeps it coming. After a quick score to start the second half, the Bisons would grab their first lead of the game. Cam Clark goes deep to Anthony Coombs. The pass was so long, they had to change the camera batteries. So fast that time stood still. He takes it 85 yards to the house. 21-14 Bisons. Just before the end of the third, Bryce McCall's in the right place at the right time. He picks Cam Clark. That's the 20th pick of McCall's CIS career. Fast forward to the dying minutes of the fourth. Now, Husky kicker Cole Sampson from the corner of Portage and Maine splits the pipes. That's a 42-yarder and is 26-25 Huskies with just under three minutes to go. But Cam Clark marches his boys down the field and on third and long, out of desperation, finds Brendan Bowman on the sidelines. First down, Manitoba. They're still alive and kicking. That big play would lead to this. Cam Clark from five yards out hits Nick Dembski, and that would be the final stake in the hearts of the Saskatchewan Huskies. Cam Clark lit up the air with 317 yards for the herd. His only blemish was the interception to Bryce McCall, who is now just one pick away from tying three other players for the CIS all-time pick record. The only blemish this show ever had on it was having me on it. Now let's head over now to Calgary, Alberta. We go, don't agree with me, Ryan. As the Alberta Golden Bears and the Calgary Dinos face off at Vince McMahon Stadium. No, 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 not letting that go. No, no Vince? No Vince. All right, we'll start things out early in the first. Calgary QB Eric Dolesky finds Brent Blasco from four yards out. Fast forward to the second. Calgary now up by two scores. And again, Dolesky finds his favorite target. Guess who? Blasco, nine yards out. Blasco narrowly gets his feet into the end zone. It's now 21, nada. And this super fan is loving it. Pretty sure that was one of your exes there, Ryan. No comment. Calgary would give up three, but then Denzel Morrison takes it from a yard out. Calgary smacks those G-Bears 65 to six. Rough start to the year for Alberta. They have now gone 198 and a half minutes without scoring a touchdown. Brutal. The last time the Golden Bears scored a touchdown was way back on October 22nd of last year against UBC. So now Calgary remains undefeated, as do the surprising Manitoba Bisons. Regina and its cross-province brethren, Saskatchewan, both are in their first wins of the year, while Alberta and UBC still searching for their first Ws. We head now to my home province, where it was blowout central around the OUA. And when I say blowouts, I'm not talking about afros. The sixth-ranked Golden Gales took to the road in the battle of the teams with Golden in their names. We go to the campus of Sir Wilfrid Laurier, where Gary Jeffries' team played host to Pat Sheehan and his Gales. A little unfair advantage to start this one as Laurier brought out its 13th man. Check out the Arsenio Hall fist pump to a pseudo chicken dance and then right into the ultimate warrior call. This girl brought her A game, but could the Golden Hawks follow her lead? Late in the second, G-Hawks rookie QB Travis Eamon on play action, rolls to his right, throws the ball behind his intended receiver, and it gets deflected. And Justin Baranatis picks up the biscuit, which sets up this three-yard score from last season's OUA rushing leader Ryan Granberg. The Gales take a 15-2 lead. Still in the second, and Queens puts the game way out of reach. Billy McPhee connects with Justin Shep Delane, who takes it to the house. A 66-yard score. That puts the Gales up by 20, and they cruise to an easy win to remain unbeaten thus far this year. The one-time QB turned receiver Justin Champelain with a monster day, picking up 176 yards on seven catches, and of course, one a touche. Well, he's French, right? No? No? I don't know about that one. Anyway, homecoming in Waterloo where it was a modern day David versus Goliath. The Warriors looking quite dapper in those new uniforms as they play host to the reigning Vanier Cup champs and the home side get off to a roaring start after a two and out on their first drive. They're forced to punt and it gets fumbled by Jonathan Mwamba. A scramble ensues and Curtis Good picks up the pigskin which puts Waterloo inside max 40. Which leads to this trickery from the Warriors. Brian Chris laterals the ball to Nick's Anna Polsky, who fires it downfield to a wide open Paul Cecil. Waterloo goes up 6 0, and the black and yellow faithful are fired up. However, this game wasn't even close as the big man, Mike Kashuk, picks backup QB. Jamie Cook's pass takes it inside the five, where Max backup QB Marshall Ferguson finds Brad Fochisado for the major. 
the Marauders crush the Warriors 68-21. Kyle Quinlan tosses close to 300 yards, playing just half the game. Mac travels to Ottawa next week in what could be a massacre for the ages. Mac is looking just nasty to start this year. And speaking of nasty, we head now to Windsor where the visiting Griffins held a five-point lead and added six more with this beauty of a pass from Jazz Lindsay to Dylan Dimitrov who hauls it in. Guelph up by 12. The Griffins would cruise to an easy 28-9 victory, but to add a little insult to injury, check out this block. Daniel McDonald lays on Akeem Wonder. The Wonder Wall gets broken in two. Rob Farkuson with the big day, picking up 142 yards on the ground and one major. Now let's check out a little Toronto Western, shall we? Homecoming game for the Purple Ponies hosting undefeated Varsity Blues. That's right, the undefeated Blues. Don't clean out your ears, you heard me right. Keeping in mind, folks, these two teams were tied before the opening kickoff. It's true. Second play of the game, Donnie Marshall connects with Evan Buchanan for a 57-yard major. The Ponies put six on the board. Still in the first with Western now up by nine. Garrett Sanvito cuts wide to the outside, gives a little leap into the end zone. Not sure if the jump was necessary, but he gets style points nonetheless. 16 blank Western, shift now to the second queue. Donnie Marshall puts the Blues to rest. Rushing 18 yards for the touchdown, Western stomps Toronto 62-7, improving its record to 2-0. Former Vancouver College standout Garrett Sanvito picks up where Tyler Varga left off last season, rushing for 109 yards on the day. Next up for the Mustangs, an epic battle at Richardson Stadium in Kingston to face Queens. So over to the big board we go. York with its first win for Warren Craney over the winless GGs. Ottawa has now completed just 12 passes in two games. That's not so good. So your defending Vanier Cup champs McMaster sit atop the standings at 2-0, joined by Queens and Western as expected. Laurier, Ottawa and Waterloo are eating the algae at the bottom with 0-2 records. Now, if you're making gentlemen's bets on how things would play out in Ontario, you probably did pretty well. Things went a little differently in the Quebecois, though. Start things out at Molson Stadium, Sherbrooke visiting McGill. The Verayor have regrouped since their 38-14 week one loss to Montreal, and they were ready to rock in enemy territory. Sherbrooke gets on the board first with a field goal, and then they added a little salt to their pepper. Sebastian Blanchard with a big grab. 62 yards later, we're looking at a 10-0 ball game. The dreaded Blanchard-J-Rock combo weren't done there, though. J-Rock sets back, this time from 21 yards out, hits Blanchard in the end zone for another seven. Rock wasn't done there either. In the dying seconds of the first half, airs out another one. This time it's David dumas Goulet. Nature Goulet picks up the easy point. Sherbrooke led McGill 30-0 at the food break. Second half now, Sherbrooke picks up right where they left off. Olivier goulet Veille with the pick. He takes it back 23 yards to the house. Rock passed for 340 yards in a game where the Verayor set a school record for points in a matchup. Bishops in tough playing host to the beast of the east, the Rouge Aor. Coulter Field is where we be, the home of the Bishops Gators. Things not good early as the hometown crowd is not going to like this start. Already down six. Matthew Masso with the pick and he takes it in for six more. The extra uno would be good. Rouge Aor up now by 13. But the Gators storm back right into this one. After putting up a field goal, Jordan Heather finds Alexander Fox and the Bishops faithful, including the construction worker from the village people. They're <laughs> feeling it. In the third now, and Bishops takes its first lead of the game. Heather finds Stephen Adu, and he puts on the afterburners, going 52 yards for pay dirt. This is a classic. Check out to the right of your screen. Teletubby, Tinky Winky, he's loving it. However, Tinky's not going to like this later in the quarter, and the Rouge Or tie things up as Pascal Lechard scrambles in for six, and now 